Welcome to rebuilding a Stuart Models Twin Victoria steam engine, setting the valve timing, making the exhaust pipe and the first test run. I've also made this collector pipe complete with valve which fastens to the steam chest covers and you can lift them off in one go. This allows me to look at the slide valves to see that they're in the correct place. Here you see the slide valve going from left to right and it's uncovering the ports an equal amount at each end. I'm doing this by just rotating the flywheel, and here's the other cylinder, exactly the same. So I can assume that the slide valves are both in the correct position. This was not done by accident of course, I did set the slide valves before recording the video. When I remachined one of the cylinders, I did it in such a way that both the exhaust ports will face in towards the centre of the engine. This allows me to use a common exhaust collector, and here's one I prepared earlier, and initially for the test run, it will be pointing away from the engine. But when the engine's on its final base, it'll be pointing down into the base, which is much more like full-size practice. To make it simple to remove this collector without having to unscrew the engines from the baseboard, what I'm doing is cheating here. I'm making some fixed studs. I'm using some Loctite 603 on the existing studs, which fixes the 7BA nuts to the threaded stud. This way they just function like bolts. Here I'm refitting the steam chest covers to the steam chest using the usual 7BA nuts and I did it without dropping any on the floor because when I drop them on the floor in my workshop they're never seen again. So it's starting to look good now, nearly ready for the test run. And the first thing to do is to absolutely flood all the moving parts with oil because the last thing that you want to happen on a test run is premature damage to the bearings owing to lack of oil. So I usually go totally over the top with the amount of oil and I pile it on like you see here. I'm using machine oil but I will be mixing it with some steam oil and I find the combination of machine oil and steam oil to be an ideal lubricant for steam engines. And during these first runs I will be oiling the engine frequently to wash out any metal particles that find their way into the bearings. Just about ready to go now, will it work? Turning on the air, nothing, aha, connect air supply to engine. The creaking that you can hear periodically is not me and it's not the engine, it's my old workshop chair, I'm trying to cope with my bulk sat on it. Right, the engine's running and it's running quite well. I'll just leave it for a while and see what happens. Yes, I'm quite pleased with that. For the first run, this is good. It's running quite slowly. There is a tight spot I can detect, but that will wear off in a while. When I fit this engine to the new baseboard, and that will be covered by the next video, it should look pretty good, and it certainly runs well. It's very powerful and very smooth. There's a little bit of run out on the flywheel, but I didn't machine it, so I'm not guilty of that. But it should be okay. There's a little bit of run out on full-size steam engines. All in all, it's a very good looking engine. And because of its 90 degree crank arrangement and twin cylinders, it should sound something like a steam locomotive when it's running under load. With a rebuild project of this type, what I would normally do now, and in fact I will be doing it, is leaving the engine on the workbench, and each day when I'm in the workshop, I'll just run the engine from the compressor. And this will remove any high points. And the high points come off the bearings in the form of a black substance that mixes in with the oil. That's why it's important to use plenty of oil to wash this stuff away. As this is the first run, you will notice I'm not running it too fast. I will, however, be speeding up the engine over the course of the next few days. And also I'll be messing with the timing to get the thing just as I want it. As is normal with steam engines, you do need early admission. This cushions the piston at each end of the stroke. Late admission does the opposite. What will happen is all the play in the bearings will be taken up at each end of the stroke and you'll likely to get a mechanical clunking noise. When I look around eBay at some engines running, I can hear this clunking noise and it's universally a combination of either bad fits, bad machining, but usually late admission. Early admission is perfect. The full size use early admission and this is the way of things. 
So just bear this in mind if you're ever messing with a steam engine yourself. That's about it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.